Welcome fellow Democracy Dealers, I hope you're all doing well and still fighting the good fight for Super Earth. In this guide I'm going to break down everything you need to know to become a fully trained freedom spreading hero, whether you're straight out of the academy or a fully seasoned warrior. There'll be something for everyone, so strap into your hell pods and let's get into it. Just to make a few things clear, helmets and capes at this time don't have any passive bonuses, unlike the body armour, so they won't be included in this guide, so just pick whatever helmet and cape you like aesthetically. And just a disclaimer, there is no one size fits all when talking about loadouts, as everyone has their own play styles, but hopefully you pick up some valuable information from this guide. So we'll start with the early game, and as soon as you come out of the training facility, you'll be issued with the AR-23 Liberator Assault Rifle. This is the second best primary weapon in the game, and will see you through most, if not all, of your missions. It has good handling, a good magazine, and is extremely versatile. For your body armour, you're going to want to get the only light armour available at this time, which is the SC-34 Infiltrator Light Armour which comes with a passive bonus called Scout, which generates radar scans when you place a marker on the map every two seconds and also reduces your detection range by 30% and more importantly it has greater speed stats helping you cover more ground when dealing that sweet democracy. For your secondary weapon, you'll use the P2 Peacemaker until you unlock the P19 Redeemer Machine Pistol on page 2 inside your Helldivers Mobilized Standard War Bond tab in your acquisitions. Once you've got the P19 Redeemer, this is the only secondary you'll need for the rest of these builds, so be sure to unlock it as soon as possible. For a grenade, I will stick to the standard issue G6 frag until you move on to the mid-game build. So now the important stuff, stratagems. I personally like running my four stratagem loadout slots as follows. Two offensive slots, this can be from your orbital, hangar or bridge sections. One slot for your support weapon, and the last slot for a sentry. I think using this ratio as a rule of thumb gives you a perfect balance of offensive and defensive aspects and will serve you well throughout your campaign. So to get onto specific stratagems early game I'd recommend using your first offensive slot on the Eagle Airstrike which is in the hangar section unlocked at level 1. It has 2 uses per rearm and an 8 second cooldown. You'll use this for clearing most outposts and your typical hordes. The second offensive slot is for the Orbital Precision Strike which you'll unlock straight away at level 1 as well. It's good for taking out heavy armour as it can be thrown onto a target to track it and has unlimited uses and a very short cooldown making it a staple early game. The third slot is the support slot and at the very beginning I would recommend getting the machine gun. It's great for thinning out hordes as well as covering your fellow divers when repositioning whilst also giving you essentially another primary to get through those ammo scarce moments. The last spot goes to sentry. You get your first sentry at level 3 and this is the machine gun sentry which is great for many situations you'll find yourself in, such as holding down an extract or using it to protect your back when playing solo. Just be sure to place it in a good position, because when I say the machine gun turret takes no prisoners, that also includes you and your squad mates. A quick tip is to stand on top of your machine gun sentry, as this is your best chance of not getting shred to pieces. And finally, boosters. The first booster you'll unlock is in the Hell Divers Mobilized tab, and it's called the Hell Pod Space Optimization Booster, which gives you and your fellow divers full ammo, stims, and grenades when exiting a Hell Pod. This is a booster you want to use to complete this early build. Next up is our mid game build. We have a few things different from our early game setup, so be sure to pay attention. Your armour will be the same, the SC-34 Infiltrator Light Armour, but once you get to page 4 on your War Bomb page, you'll unlock the SG-225 Breaker Shotgun. This is the best primary weapon in the game and is my go-to for blasting everything and anything that swears to threaten Sweet Liberty. It has a minimal recoil for a shotgun and a very impressive range and deals amazing damage whilst being fairly economical in the ammo department. Your secondary is the same as it was before, the P19 Redeemer Machine Pistol. You'll want to get the G16 Impact Grenade on page 5. This is my favourite grenade, as the title suggests, it detonates on impact, which is handy when you're about to be swarmed, and is great for closing bug nests quickly. So for your mid-game stratagems, I would keep your two offensive slots the same, the Eagle Strike and the Orbital Precision Strike, as these still stand up strong mid-game, and I would then upgrade your Machine Gun Support slot to the Auto Cannon, which you unlock at level 10. The Auto Cannon is an amazing weapon when it comes to taking out the more armoured enemies, whilst also having a good magazine size and a fairly fast reload in comparison to other heavy support weapons. And for your sentry slot, I would get rid of your machine gun turret and replace it with a mortar sentry you unlock at level 8. This mortar packs some serious punch, it can wipe out most enemies, is great for elimination missions and can thin hordes and protect your retreat. It's an absolute must for any mid game build. And for the booster, you can unlock the Vitality Booster on page 4. This will stop you and your fellow divers from being seriously injured when you take too much damage, which is really handy to have. 
you can either keep your early game hell pod space optimization booster or switch to the vitality booster your squad mates should equip theirs too so normally you'll have both boosters active when playing mid game with similarly level players and last and certainly not least the end game build to help you spread that sweet liberty across the galaxy so armor the best armor you guessed it is still the light armor and to be specific it's the sc30 trailblazer scout light armor you unlock way down on page seven this armor gives you the fastest speed stats in the game so far and gives you the passive bonus called Scout, which if you remember is the same one from our earlier mid-game armor builds. If you're opposed to light armor and want a second recommendation, then the DP40 Herp of the Federation medium armor for its passive bonuses is what you need. Just to know, as of recording, the extra protection from armor isn't in effect, so keep that in mind, but this armor is more used for its passive bonus, which is called Democracy Protects which gives you a huge 50% chance of not dying when taking lethal damage and also prevents all damage from bleeding. So as you can imagine, this armor is very popular amongst those playing on the Helldiver difficulty. As for primary weapons, at this stage you should be experienced in both the AR-23 Liberator Assault Rifle or the SG-225 Breaker Shotgun. Either of these are perfect to use, it just comes down to which one you personally prefer. The secondary, as you know, should always be the P19 Redeemer, and your grenade should still be the G16 Impact Grenade from the earlier builds. And of course, endgame stratagems. You'll see a lot of differing opinions on these, but this is my preference when it comes to dealing with that glorious democracy. My first offensive slot unlocked at level 15 is the Eagle 500kg Bomb. When I say this thing goes boom, I mean it. It can single-handedly take out some enemy outposts, as well as take out every enemy in the game with a well-placed beacon, including Titans. Also unlocked at level 15 is my second offensive slot, the Orbital Laser. This weapon is straight out of Gears of War and is my favourite stratagem. It locks onto the biggest target in its range, whether it's a Charger, a Bile Titan or even a Dropship. The Orbital Laser has you covered and once it's killed one target, it then moves on to the next biggest target until the timer is up. My support slot goes to none other than the Railgun unlocked at level 20. This army of one charged weapon is an absolute must. You can single handedly take down charges and other large enemies very quickly with some well placed shots. It has a semi decent ammo capacity of 20 rounds, it doesn't require a supply pack and as it stands currently has a very fast reload compared to the other heavy hitting support weapons. You will not see any seasoned squad not running at least two of these on the high difficulties. The last slot is very circumstantial. First off is using it as a sentry spot which I personally do. I use the auto cannon level 13 sentry or the rocket sentry at level 15 as towards the end game you encounter a lot more armoured enemies and these sentries really help keep you from being overrun. And finally since it is considered meta I'll shout out the shield generator pack which is unlocked at level 20. You'll see a lot of people running this end game as that extra level of protection from a personal shield is everything on Helldivers difficulty and has become a staple within the solo player's arsenal. I prefer running an extra sentry but find out what works best for you. As far as boosters go, the main go to for endgame is the stamina enhancement booster unlocked way down on page 7 which increases stamina for you and your squad and is again essential when trying to complete objectives in a high difficulty as timing is everything. So with that all said and done, what is your best advice for anyone new starting their journey? Or if you're a seasoned vet, what is the best tip you've heard recently that will help out your fellow divers in fighting for Super Earth? I hope you fellow democracy dealers found this helpful and if you did please be sure to like and subscribe and comment I'd really appreciate it this is my most in-depth video to date so if you did like it please interact to show me that I'm doing the right thing and to check out the channel if you have any questions please ask and I'll try my best to answer them and I'll see you divers on the battlefield blagger out